Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. I oftentimes spend a lot of time speaking about elevated blood glucose in the setting of metabolic syndrome and type 2 diabetes, but today I want to talk a little bit about hypoglycemia or low blood sugar levels. This is actually really, really common. And oftentimes people are unaware of the fact that diabetes is the primary reason as to why people can experience low blood glucose. So I'm Amanda Williams, MD, MPH, and let's talk a little bit about hypoglycemia. So hypoglycemia is also known as low blood glucose, and this occurs when the level of glucose or sugar in your blood drops below what is actually healthy for you. Now, for many people who have diabetes, this is usually when their blood glucose drops below 70. Um, Now, this can vary from one person to the next, but we know that those who have type 1 diabetes and those who have type 2 diabetes, those who are taking insulin or other diabetic medications are definitely very prone to experiencing these bouts of hypoglycemia or the severely low blood glucose. Um, They did a large global study where they assessed diabetics who take insulin and they found that four out of five of them who have type 1 and at least half who have type 2 diabetes reported having low blood glucose at least one time a month. So when you say, well, one time a month, but that can be incredibly frightening because when someone has incredibly low blood glucose, they can have a whole slew of different symptoms that can actually lead them to having to go to the emergency room. So maybe you feel tired, maybe you feel dizzy, jittery, shaky, Uh, maybe you feel like your heart is beating too fast or has an abnormal rhythm to it. You may get a headache. Um, For some people, maybe they even have a problem with, you know, speaking clearly. Um, We know that In a very severe case, we can end up with seizures or even, you know, loss of consciousness. And this is really, really problematic. Now, when we look at emergency room visits due to hypoglycemia, there's actually more people who show up at an ER because of hypoglycemia as opposed to hyperglycemia. Because many times when your blood sugar is really high, oftentimes you don't notice that. But when the blood sugar drops, you see those symptoms much more prevalent. So it's it accounts for more ER visits, people who have low blood glucose as opposed to those who have elevated blood glucose. So looking at hypoglycemia as a whole, we certainly know that there are many different causes. Predominantly, we're gonna be looking at those who are taking insulin and other diabetic medications. But we can also look at people who have PCOS, for example, who have advanced liver or kidney disease. There are many different causative reasons as to why your blood glucose can be thrown off. We can look at um, adrenal dysfunction. We know that the adrenal glands certainly can play a role. So those who have even Addison's disease, certainly this can happen. Um, Certain medications, fluoroquinolones, for example, can, can do this. But if someone has hypoglycemia, it can be really scary because they they feel this anxiousness and they make it sweaty and like I said that that pounding or racing heart rate and this is something that needs to be addressed now usually the the first thing is to get sugar back in to the system to try and bring that back up but that may only be a temporary fix so we have to look at 
the long term what you can be doing. So we can look at how we can slow the rate of sugar rising or spiking in the blood. Because what happens is when you get an elevation in blood glucose, sometimes we get this reactive amount of insulin that comes out. And so we get too much insulin that's then released. And then that pushes down the the glucose way too low. So oftentimes I talk about insulin resistance. That's when there's that delay in insulin release. Well, we can also have when insulin actually gets released at too much of an amount. And this is why we see it in those who take diabetic medications or are taking insulin itself because it pushes that glucose down um, way too fast. So how can we naturally address this? Well, we can certainly look at fiber. We know that fiber is wonderful when it comes to slowing the rate of carbohydrate absorption. Obviously, choosing the right foods and not picking the bad carbs. So having, you know, multiple meals throughout the day. So we try to keep that steady state of blood sugar that includes things like fruits and vegetables that are high in fiber. We can also look at other nutrients that can be potentially beneficial. We can look at the white kidney bean extract, which you would find in our phase two formulation. We know that this helps to impede alpha amylase. That's the enzyme that's responsible for breaking down those sugars. So it's actually slowing that rate once again of glucose being spiked up, which hence would then stop that insulin from over responding. So there's a lot of different approaches to this, but we have to recognize that this is very common. And for those who who actually have diabetes, this is very, very prevalent. And so you have to be very conscientious about the foods that you're eating, but also the medications that you're taking. And if you find, say, if you're testing your blood glucose on a regular basis, and you continuously find that your blood sugar drops a little too low, that's the time that you definitely need to speak with your doctor. And maybe there needs to be an adjustment done with the medication dose that you're actually taking. I've worked with many diabetics where, you know, maybe they're on too high of insulin and so they they take their insulin and then you know an hour later they're on the couch sleeping because they're they've basically had a sugar crash and that that really can be um very very scary when we think about reactive hypoglycemia and that usually occurs after eating within about two to five hours after you eat and this is created because of that insulin hyper secretion so reactive hypoglycemia is definitely something that needs to be addressed. And that's why those small meals multiple times throughout the day that include those high fiber foods really can make an impact on stopping that. Now, if there's other underlying issues such as, you know, um, Addison's disease where there's a, a cortisol problem, certainly working with your physician with that, PCOS um, is definitely another area that we have to always consider. A lot of women who have PCOS will find that they have these episodes of hypoglycemia. So once again, diet really plays a key role into this. Now, the the main thing is, I said, is to be able to monitor your blood sugar. And if you see that you're having different times throughout the day where the blood sugar really seems to plummet off, that's when you want to make those dietary adjustments and make sure that you are getting those really good foods, um, those high fiber foods, and taking in multiple small meals throughout the day. I cannot stress that one enough. But we can also look at including in things like phase two, um, which would certainly be very beneficial to help to support a healthier blood glucose insulin response. Certainly other things like chromium as well, um, just that key trace mineral, which plays a significant role in the blood glucose metabolism. And so we can recognize that for for diabetics who even take supplemental chromium, even at a low dose, 200 micrograms per day, they they did a study where they when they gave this to to those who had hypoglycemia um, over the course of three months, this led to significant improvements of their blood sugar metabolism, as well as a reduction in those hypoglycemic 
symptoms that were occurring. So hypoglycemia, definitely something that is a big problem. As I said, more ER visits because of low blood sugar as opposed to high blood sugar. And certainly we know that diabetics are at a greater risk for developing low glucose. So that is all that I have for you for today. I want to thank you so much for tuning in to the Invite Health Podcast. Remember, you can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts or by visiting invitehealth.com slash podcast. Do make sure that you subscribe and you leave us a review. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and we will see you next time for another episode of the Invite Health Podcast.